So how many of you listened to President Kennedy's speech last night? That's what I thought. Good thing I took the precaution of recording it for posterity. Unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launch from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. The path we have chosen for the present is full of hazards, as all paths are. But it is the one most consistent with our character and courage as a nation and our commitments around the world. The cost of freedom is always high. Have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose. And that is the path of surrender or submission. Our goal is not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere. I'm only 17. And we hope around the world. Oh, come on up, we'll talk for you. God willing, <laughs> that goal will be achieved. The totality of human existence is under the threat of destruction. Mankind may disappear without a trace as if you or I had never even existed. Does that mean midterms will be postponed? Mr. Crow, when the bomb hits, not only will midterms be postponed, but your crib sheets will disappear. Disappear? I don't like things that disappear. Ever since I lost my parents in a Greyhound bus terminal. I couldn't find them for hours. I thought they didn't even exist. Mr. Dorfman, you have stumbled upon the question of human existence. And this is a question that has plagued the great philosophers since the beginning of time. Gee, and I'm only a freshman. <laughs> there. The whole campus should be able to hear me now. This is Civil Defense Coordinator A.S. Einswein. Ah, the electronic age with an important message for the student body. Students of Faber, in this time of crisis, we of the Faber Civil Defense Unit never sleep. <laughs> now this is a situation. We got JFK and LBJ telling us the ICBMs from the USSR are liable to bring the USA in DOA at the UN and NYC. Let's just hope that the CIA and the KGB can work things out with the OAS, because if they don't, it's R.I.P. There's something that always works. Read chapter 10 in your books and get ready for a quiz tomorrow. Mr. Dorfman. Yes, Mr. Jennings? I'm glad to see that at least one of my students is interested in the problems of human existence. Who? Well, you can. <laughs> Not everybody can grasp the intricacies of metaphysics. Well, um, it's been kind of a hobby of mine, you know, all along. Excellent. By tomorrow, I want you to prove to me that you do indeed exist. And a good place to begin is with the eminent French existentialist, Jean-Paul Sartre. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Jennings, would he be in the faculty lunchroom now? <laughs> Speaker on the quad. Well, I'm sure if we put the green thingamajig into the red, what you would call it, that it. <laughs> What's going on here? 
Well, you know, Dean, I've been waiting for money from the Faber Civil Defense Fund to repair this thing ever since the crisis started, and all they send me are colorful posters and informative pamphlets. And Dean Wormer, we just had a call from the Faculty Shelter Committee. They've been waiting for their 23 years supply of K-rations and blankets, and all they got were colorful posters and informative pamphlets. And the kitchen employees are just... Be quiet. Where's Niedermeyer? Uh, he's in your uh, office. Uh, Why didn't you sir? tell me? What are you doing in my chair? Good morning, sir. You are the Civil Defense Fund's Appropriations Chairman, aren't you? Yes, sir. In charge of making sure that the government civil service defense funds are fairly and equally distributed to everyone here at Faber? That I am, sir. Good. Let's have a little progress report. Well, sir, we've been distributing these colorful posters and informative pamphlets. Pamphlets. Posters. <coughs> Mr. Niedermeyer, if the worst came to the worst, what do we do? <laughs> well, actually, sir, not all the funding has gone into posters and pamphlets. You see, we at Omega House have taken extra precautions to ensure the survival of those most fit to survive. And we'd especially like you, Dean Wormer, to come take a look at those precautions. Let's do it. Right. I don't exist. Hi, Ein Swine. Hi, Ein Swine. Swine. Delta. I think you'll approve of our security measures, sir. What the hell's going on here? Right this way. <laughs> Request clearance. <laughs> Niedermeyer, Marmalade, Wormer. Wormer, huh? Wormer who? Dean Wormer, you woodpecker's pincushion. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Uh, you may pass. <laughs> Who is this tree? <laughs> Solid steel anti-blast door. Good against fallout, flying debris, and peak pressures of over 100 PSI. Depth, nine yards underground. Wall, sir. Three and a half feet of reinforced concrete. <laughs> Living quarters for 20, for up to 23 years. Boxes of government-approved K-rations. One gross per case, 8,000 cases total. Manually operated air blower. Three cubic feet per minute per person of atmosphere. Pleasantly scented with just a touch of pine. Very impressive. <laughs> just how many people know about this place? Just the Omegans and Mandy. And, of course, you, sir. Good. If the bomb drops, we don't want any freeloaders breathing in a nice pine-scented air, eh? My sentiments exactly, sir. Gentlemen, you've used the funds wisely. What you reading, Hoover? It's called You Can Survive the Bomb. You know, it says here that a house built with three feet of concrete will stop 90% of all gamma radiation. How many feet of concrete does Delta House have? Concrete? All we have is two inches of plywood. Does that mean we'll be radioactive? Uh, 
at the very least, we'll all glow in the dark, yes. And if the electricity goes out, we can read by each other. <laughs> Mother of God, is this the end of Delta House? Well, if it is, we'll have to go out in true Delta style. Totally inebriated. We don't have an air raid shelter, and there's nothing we can do about it. So we might as well take it in stride. What will be, will be. Or maybe it won't be. Still scary, though. to the end. At the end. <laughs> I think, therefore I am. I think. <laughs> okay, now. Uh, 48 dozen hot dogs. You got them? Good. Okay. Uh, 32 bags of potato chips. Family. This isn't family size. Well, Pinto, you gotta get what I say to get. I'm the dean. They have to let us in. And I'm the dean's secretary. <laughs> Open up! Hey, Niederbar. Open up. It's me, Dean Wormer. How do I know it's really you? Listen here, you starched wimp. It's me, Vernon Wormer. The man who hid the accident report when your great Dane ate the librarian's chihuahua? Oh, that Dean Wormer. Gentlemen, a toast to us, the first generation in history that has a chance to be the last. Omega House is Target A! All right, we have the ticket! Close. Once in a lifetime chance to see the nuclear holocaust. Here, have a pair of glasses right there. Got a couple of lovely pairs of glasses for a lovely couple right there for you. Get your sunglasses right here. Oh, oh we have to hurry. There's only 30 minutes to the blast. I'm already blasted. <laughs> There's something we have to do before we go. Larry Kroger, you're taking advantage of this situation. Oh, Muffy. If not now, when? Trust me. Have a cigar. I've been saving these for a special occasion. 
They're imported. Really? Where from? Havana. <laughs> Doors secure with everyone bedded down for the night, Doug. Good work, Greg. I think it's time we make visual reconnaissance. <laughs> <laughs> this way, sir. Up scope. about this whole thing. There won't be any deltas left. <laughs> Excuse me, with the waiting and all the men's spirits are a bit low. Everyone's wondering what to do next. Well, let's see what your informative pamphlet has to say. Right. <laughs> Chapter 8. Keep your radio tuned to the Conrad station at all times. Mr. Niedermeyer, where is the radio? Radio. <laughs> you forgot the radio. <laughs> I exist. I really do exist. I knew it all the time. Jean Paul, what a guy. Sacrifices will have to be made. But if that's what's needed to preserve the Omegan way of life, then we must all do our part. Please sit. <laughs> Jefferson, pass the Hollandaise. You have Hollandaise, but no radio? <laughs> How do you get in here? In a crisis, sir. And Omegan thinks of everything. Do you know what kind of hell this would be without Jefferson's Lobster Newberg? And if you think good help is hard to find now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
mass hysteria, major looting in the downtown area, and total breakdown of all public services, we have passed this test with flying colors and are well prepared for any eventuality. Can we just uh, pretend for a little bit? Distributing that stuff. I think we've been discovered. Here, let me take a look at that. Anybody home? Why haven't they come out? Haven't they heard the announcement? How? There's no Air Vincent at the shelter. What about a radio? No, Anita Meyer, he probably brought Hollandaise instead of a radio. <laughs> <laughs> that means they don't know. Yeah. What they don't know can hurt them. We're going to stage World War III just for them. <laughs> the worst has happened. America as we know it no longer exists, but as your leader I've prepared for every contingency. Chapter 10. Communists are people too. Stem, they're here! Transmitter. I just conducted a civil defense test, and hardly anybody paid attention to me. That could be very dangerous. A person should be prepared, you know. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm glad I found you. Did you guys miss me, huh? Kent, we didn't even notice you were gone. Uh -huh. 